Here we're going to tie a traditional fly called the trude. I'm going to tie it in a chartreuse or a lime color called a lime trude. Uh, the other color this is tied in is a red and they call that one. That's a pretty common color and it's uh, called the royal trude. Uh, I like the lime one. It, you, it imitates a uh, little caddis or just a general kind of a tractor pattern. Chartreuse is supposed to probably look like a little caddis pupa emerging or something like that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, oh I'd say about 10 or so golden pheasant tippets and we want to tie these in so they're about the length of the the shank of the hook and I simply just tie those in right on top of the shank trying to keep them nice and centered on the top and then I'm just going to take my thread forward just clean everybody up and I'm going to take it back and we want to take this tail all the way back to where the bend of the hook basically starts. Once it starts to curve we'll stop and I'll take it forward a few wraps. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in the body. For this we're going to use some peacock curl. I'm just going to take one strand of peacock curl here for kind of the the butt section of the body. All I'm going to do is just take that peacock curl I'm just going to build up a little short butt section with it. I'm going to bring it forward about a third of the way. And I'm going to secure it. Now the next thing to do is to tie in the the tag or whatever color you want your trude to be. So here I'm just going to tie in some chartreuse UTC 140. Now you can use floss for this as well. I like to use thread. It's just a little easier to work with. It doesn't splay out quite as much and the UTC 140 is plenty flossy enough for me to work with. But uh, you can use floss, silk floss, or nylon floss, whatever you want. And uh, thread's a little more common, so I usually use it. I have it laying around all the time. And we're just going to build up a little tag. Try to keep it nice and even, if you can. And you want the tag to be about the length of your, uh, your butt there. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want to creep too far forward. Then you can trim out your thread and your tag end once you're finished. And you have your little your little tag there. Uh, the next thing to do is to finish the rest of the body. And for this again we're going to use some peacock curl. And uh, you can use two strands for this portion. I like the body to be a little bit bulkier than the butt end of it. This will also help prop up the, the wing when we start to tie in the wing. I'm just going to tie these right in front of the uh, the tag. Then I'm going to take my thread forward and I'm going to stop about a quarter of the way from the the eye of the hook. We're just going to build up a little short section here of body. Once I get to my thread I can stop. You want to make sure you definitely do not go too far forward on this fly. We still have the hackle and the wing to go so uh, you want to be I'd say a little bit more than halfway that's probably about two-thirds of the way. The next thing to do is to tie in the wing which is going to be some calf uh, tail and uh, we're going to use white and we're going to cut out a clump uh, that's about I'd say half the diameter of a, of a pencil, maybe a little bit less. We're going to put it into a hair stacker, stack it and uh, calf tail is a very coarse materials so sometimes it takes a couple rounds of stacking so what I do is I just kinda take it out and then I'll push it back up into the stacker give it a couple more good poundings and if you want the tips really super even you may have to do that <clears throat> three four five times uh, I don't mind if the tips aren't perfectly even I don't know if the fish really care too much I like the tips to be 
fairly even. If there's a couple stragglers in there, you can pull those out. Now the wing, we want the wing to hang over the, the butt just a little ways uh, and about halfway uh, back over the tail. You don't want it too long, so we're just going to take it, pinch it into place. We're going to do a couple of loose wraps just to capture the calf tail. This can be very tricky material to deal with. It's very coarse, very dense, so it takes quite a few thread wraps to uh, capture it and get it under control. Then you want to make sure you trim it nice and close. And you can see here we haven't crowded the eye or anything yet. We want to make sure that we have plenty of room up here for our hackle. Now what I like to do is make sure that wing stands up. I like the wings on my trudes to be nice and high so I can see them. Also gives it a nice big profile on the water. So I just kind of take it and yank it and force it to stand up, poof up. Now once we've done that, we're ready to tie in our our uh, hackle. For this we're going to use brown hackle. You can also use dark bar ginger or any uh, brown uh, and grizzly variation. This is just a, a plain brown hackle. We're going to tie this in right in front of our wing. I'm going to make sure it's nice and secure. I'm going to trim out that uh, stem there. Now I'm going to take my thread and I'm actually just going to drop it right behind our uh, hackle here instead of taking all the way to the eye. And what this is going to do is since I have kind of this cone shaped uh, head, my hackle is naturally going to want to slide forward. But if I keep my thread there and I wrap each wrap right uh, in front of the, the hackle and right behind my thread, the thread actually helps keep a little bit of tension onto uh, my hackle and it keeps it from sliding forward. If you trap a few fibers, don't worry about it too much. It's going to happen. You can try to minimize it, but uh, at the end we'll just try to get in there and clean them up as much as we can. I'm actually going to take this hackle all the way up to the, the eye of the hook, where I then capture the hackle. Then we're going to get in here nice and tight with my nice fine tip scissors. And I'm going to trim out all the extra hackle butts, tips, just kind of give it a overall trim. Then I can pull all the hackle back with my fingers and I'll wrap back up onto it with just a couple of turns. And there you go, you can see it pushes all that hackle back. And you can see I have a nice dense hackle even though I had that kind of tapered body that was uh, difficult to wrap a hackle on. If you leave your thread right behind or right in front of your your hackle and then just wrap the hackle forward in between uh, the previously wrapped hackle and your thread, the thread will kind of help it lay in place. And once you've whip finished can trim your thread, give your wing a nice spruce up. If you have a couple stragglers, there's always a few calf tail stragglers here that uh, kind of get a wild hair. I'll use my hackle pliers, I'll just clip into them and you can just kind of pull them right out. They always, there's always a few that don't want to cooperate and curve the wrong way. And uh, that's all there is to the, the trude. And you can find the <clears throat> recipe as well as the materials for this fly on our website in the riffle.com. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can uh, click the link in the description and follow that to our website. And uh, that way you can find the recipe and uh, links to all the materials as well. And uh, that's the Lime Trude.